So the year is 1984 and MoMA, the Museum of Modern Art in New York, has just opened their exhibition titled An International Survey of Painting and Sculpture. The exhibition was supposed to showcase all the best artists from across the world. However, out of the 169 artists featured, only 13 of them were women. To add further insult to injury, the curator went on to say, any artist who wasn't in the show should rethink his career. Angered by this ignorance, a group of women decided to protest outside of the exhibition. They brought their placards and chanted together to try and raise awareness of what was happening. But they quickly realized no one seemed to care. We realized it didn't work. Nobody cared about what we were saying. We figured there had to be a better way of getting people's attention. To prove to people that the art world is not the meritocracy that everyone thought it was. The very next year, in 1985, a group known as the Gorilla Girls came up with their first poster critiquing the art industry, and the art world would never again be the same. It's so warm today. Hello, and welcome to another video. Um, this is a series I like to call A Brief History of Female Artists, where I like to talk about female artists who have been influential in our art history. And this time I want to talk about the iconic group of women known as the Gorilla Girls, who wreaked havoc in the art scene during the 80s in New York. So it wasn't just the exhibition hosted at MoMA that prompted these ladies to take action against the sexism in the art world. In 1971, a feminist essay titled Why Have There Been No Great Women Artists, written by Linda Nochlin, was released. In her essay, Nochlin talked about how women aren't recognized in the art world on the same level as, for example, Picasso or Michelangelo, and she blamed the art world and its entrenched institutional bias. She said that women have never had the same opportunities to compete on a level playing field with men. She writes, The fault lies not in our stars, our hormones, our menstrual cycles, but in our institutions and in our education. How many women artists had one-person exhibitions in NYC art museums last year? Was the title of the Gorilla Girls' first poster. It listed four of the most known museums in New York City and listed how many one-person exhibitions have been hosted by women. The answer was only one of them. The Gorilla Girls started off by plastering their posters all over Manhattan, sometimes even inside of the art venues that they were directly critiquing. They used advertising techniques to get their point across, taking inspiration from artists such as Barbara Kruger and Jenny Holzer. One of the Gorilla Girls described their strategy as writing a killer headline, using killer statistics and crazy visuals, really kept on doing just that. In time, it really has added up to something that has an effect. In 1986, the Gorilla Girls sent out a series of pink postcards to well-known art collectors, calling them out on their lack of female representation in their collections. The letter reads, Dear art collector, it has come to our attention that your collection, like most, does not contain enough art by women. We know that you feel terrible about this and will rectify the situation immediately. All our love, Gorilla Girls. So not only were these postcards sent out to shame the art collectors, but this letter also pokes fun of the social expectations of women. Women are often pressured into being soft and demure, and so was a conscious choice by the Gorilla Girls to print their letters with cursive handwriting on soft pink paper. Even the language they used, we know you feel terrible, all our love, appeals to the more sensitive side that women often must portray. So what's the deal with the masks? Um, so the name of the group is fairly obvious. They were a group of women who were conducting guerrilla warfare against the art industry, basically. However, one of the members confused the word guerrilla with gorilla, um, which then led to the incorporation of the gorilla masks. 
It also became a reference to King Kong, which is a very masculine symbol, and it poked fun of the way that King Kong was known for terrorizing New York. The masks weren't the only thing that the women used to hide their identities. All of them took on pseudonyms of deceased female artists or other creative women, Frida Kahlo, Kathe Kollwitz, and Gertrude Stein being a few examples. Kathe Kollwitz has talked about the reason they wanted to keep themselves anonymous, and she says, We wanted to create the idea that we were everywhere, and we were listening. We could be working at the MoMA, or even at Leo Castelli's gallery. We wanted to create this idea that the art world was being watched, surveilled, and scrutinized. So, probably their most famous poster was released in 1986. It's a bright yellow poster with the image of a reclining nude woman taken from Jean-Auguste Dominique Ingres' painting titled La Grande Odalisque. Um, I probably pronounced that very poorly. Um, with a gorilla mask placed over her head. The text reads, Do women have to be naked to get into the Met Museum? And at the bottom it reads, Less than 5% of the artists in the modern art section are women but 85% of the nudes are female. One of the Gorilla Girls has talked about how this poster came about, and she said, One Sunday morning we conducted a weenie count at the Metropolitan Museum of Art, comparing the number of nude males to nude females in the artworks on display. The poster was placed on a bus after they rented some advertising space, and so this image was paraded all over New York, making fun of one of the most famous art institutions in the world. The poster was met with a lot of criticism and was taken down after the bus company cancelled their contract. The reasoning was that they thought the poster was too suggestive. And they also had issues with the fact that the figure appeared to have more than just a fan in her hand. One can question if the bus company really did think the image was too suggestive, or if they were just afraid to critique such a huge institution as the Met Gallery. Another well-known poster is from 1988 and is titled The Advantages of Being a Woman Artist. It lists 13 points, 13 being an unlucky number in which women are being discriminated against in the art world. Some points are having the opportunity to choose between your career and motherhood, being included in a revised version of art history. The list ends with a funny self-referencing point, getting your picture in the art magazines wearing a gorilla suit. So I want to mention just how controversial these posters were back then. They were even met with criticism from liberal circles who otherwise would have called themselves feminist. It's hard to imagine now because politics and art are so intertwined today but back in the 80s, mixing art and politics was rejected by most people. A lot of people also viewed Guerrilla Girls' tactics as a way of just filling quotas, which a lot of people were opposed. Colwitz from the Guerrilla Girls have said, All hell broke loose. From the time our first posters went up in 1985, it was a breath of fresh air for artists who were struggling and not getting any appreciation. We keep making trouble keep upending the art world's notions on what is good and what is right. Another member, Frida Kahlo, said, We feel museums have a duty to tell the real story of art history, not just a white male artist part. Over time, many art galleries and institutions started to take notice of the Gorilla Girls, and some of them even sent out an open call to female artists to feature at their venues. Gorilla Girls started to appear at lectures and panels, and in 1986, they were hosted at Cooper Union, where they organized two panels where art critics and dealers were invited to talk about their thoughts about the gender gap in art and how to close it. So how did the Gorilla Girls react once they started to become recognized by the institutions they had spent their whole career criticizing? This is what they said in an interview. What do you do when the art world you've spent your whole life attacking suddenly embraces you? Well, you take your critique right inside the joint. We dissed MoMA at its own symposium on feminism. We criticized the Tate Modern and the is Istanbul Modern. The response? After we made fun of the National Gallery of Art, they vowed to change their ways. 
Ditto, the Tate Modern, and MoMA. So during the 90s, the group started to shift their focus away from just the art industry. And they started to poke fun of the whole media industry. In 2002, they created a poster featuring the anatomically correct Oscar, which features a statuette resembling the Oscar statue, but is instead a naked white man covering his private parts. Next to the image, statistics are written. Best director has never been awarded to a woman. 92.8% of the writing awards have gone to men. Only 5.5% of the acting awards have gone to people of color. The poster was displayed in Hollywood for months before the Oscars. As of 2000, the group have widened their focus enough so that they have split into different offshoots. There is Gorilla Girls Incorporated, which is the original Gorilla Girls. Um, however, only two members from the original group remains. We also have Gorilla Girls Broadband Incorporated and Gorilla Girls On Tour Incorporated. In an interview, Frida Kahlo and Kathy Kalwitz, the two remaining original members, were asked about how many members they had in 1995 and replied, We don't have any idea. We secretly suspect that all women are born Gorilla Girls. It's just a question of helping them discover it. For sure. Thousands. Probably. Hundreds of thousands. Maybe millions. So lastly, I want to talk about a poster created in 2015. It's a revisit from the group's first poster created in 1985, and it compares the number of one-person exhibitions from women from back in 1985, and then comparing it to 2015, 30 years later. Hearing about what these women did, and how much effort they put into teaching the world about the rampant sexism in the art world, I'm a bit disappointed to see how little change there has actually been, if you look at the poster where they list the number of female um, one-person shows, you can see that there's not that much difference. Not after 30 years. A report from 2019 also showed that only 11% of art acquired by America's top museums between 2008 and 2018 was by female artists. Nonetheless, the Gorilla Girls did manage to start a discussion about sexism within our art institutions, and even though we still have a long way to go, more and more people are being aware of sexism in general, and we're making progress every single day. So that is a brief history about the Gorilla Girls, and I really hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please give it a like and subscribe, and with that, I will see you again in my next video. Bye.